Superman and Lois season two, episode five. We just had a hiatus for this show because of the Olympics. It's back in a big, bad way. And those of you who have been keeping up with this series with me and have been watching all these reviews, you might notice I am not in my usual setup. That is because I'm moving. I got a new place to live. I was operating out of the basement of my old place and this new area where I'm moving to, I have an actual office set up. It's been a long process. I won't get into it, but we are currently moving here and I, I'm getting everything set up. But the hustle never stops. You cannot go a day or a night without getting into the world of Superman and Lois. So I figured I still got time. I still got some new mic. I still got some new lights. Let's talk about this episode, even if it's not up to the par that we've seen from the previous ones. However, though this setup may not look as good, this episode was fantastic. It was very solid. It was so fun and so cool. Just to come back to this world, I've missed it. It's I know it's only been like three weeks since the last one. It's felt like forever just because this season's been incredibly fun and jumping back into this world was just super incredible and super cool. So the big premise of this episode is the quinceanera for Sarah. And she has been, I guess they've been setting up for a while. And she's been very like adamant and on kind of hit and miss on that part where it's like, does she want to do it? Does she want to be a part of this world? She's decided, yes, I'm going to be a part of this. I'm going to do it for my father because Kyle gets a lot of play in this episode, which is really cool to see because I love Kyle. He's, he's probably my favorite character. I cannot wait to talk about him in this episode. So it's the quinceanera. It's happening at the Kent farm. But before the Kents can actually get involved in that part of the story, they have a couple more things they need to sort out with their own personal lives. We open up this episode by seeing the diamond pendant necklace that Allie was given to from her father. That led me to think, okay, Allie's going to have an important father who's a character from other comic books. We don't reveal who it is. And while I'm watching the episode, I'm just thinking, okay, this is either going to be a new character we've never seen before or an existing character my first thought was a lex a zod one of those type of characters but i don't think they'd go that route my other thought was the monitor or harbinger from the crisis event but it wasn't they kind of set up they kind of actually just they just say it right away it's bizarro world it sounds like the world we are seeing in the other storyline and like the other world where our bizarro came from it's bizarro world and ali's family has like a hold on it she took over from her father which could be a fun area to explore. I'm wondering if they're going to connect it to like the Eclipso diamond stuff from Stargirl. I doubt it, but it had that kind of feel to it, like this magical diamond that could do anything. I don't think they'll go that route though, but it's just something that maybe they could have went into a little bit more. Uh, obviously it's fine, but kind of cool to see that. I did enjoy that aspect of things because Chrissy actually gets involved with it. She takes like the plunge, she gets drugged and starts to see things in that world. And it leaves you to go, okay, Okay, at some point this season, I don't know what episode and I don't know when, we're going to Bizarro World. We have to. We have to be setting up. There's a scene where Bizarro is looking at Lois and he's like, you look familiar. He doesn't say, but it's like, you look familiar. There is something about you that I recognize, which makes me think we're going to Bizarro World or we're going to see more Bizarro showing up. Now... There's been a point of contention for me when it comes to the show. There's been something that they've done that I haven't really loved. The storyline of John Kent has been mixed at best. I really, really didn't want him to become the kid taking the superpower drugs just because I think it's lazy and obvious. But sometimes tropes are tropes for a reason. Even if you don't love it, there is something to be said about going down that rabbit hole and doing that with the characters. I get it. And I'm fine with it. I just think, come on, guys, we could do something else with him. He learns that Jordan wants to be trained by their grandfather. And instantly he's like, well, I could help out too. Like, that sounds fun. But, you know, maybe I could be part of this too. And he wants to show up, Jordan. Because I get it, man. When your brother is suddenly the Superboy, he calls him Superboy, like the perfect adamant, the perfect kid who could do no wrong. He's got the girl. Everything's working out for Jordan. I don't understand why John would be like, this sucks. I want to be special. So there's a nice scene where the two of them are kind of like fighting in the basement. And you just see the grandfather like, I don't know what's going on with you, John, but knock it off. You're out of here for now. And that does kind of get resolved later on in the episode where Jordan sees like the anger coming through and John and his like eyes turn that certain color. You don't explicitly say what's happening. You know, he doesn't say, hey, I'm taking these drugs. It's just more like, hey, I might have powers coming in, which is kind of cool. 
I do want to address this because I think it's very important for the show. There have been set photos leaked showing the stuff with John becoming the 90s version of Superboy. I think it looks fantastic just from the set photos we saw. I think that's going to be an alternate universe, John, at this point. I don't think he's going to be working with his father yet. I, it just doesn't make sense to me. Maybe he will, but as it stands, I don't think that's the case because why would that happen now? It, I don't know, but whatever. So the stuff there works really well. Lois doesn't get a lot of play in this. She kind of takes a sideline to see what's really going on here. And Superman gets some pretty good scenes here. He's talking to Anderson again, and it's like, I have to get that pendant back from you because I think I could stop it by doing it. But this is an American problem. Anderson's got to do the American thing and protect his people. Seeing Superman actually visit Tag in his hospital was a really nice scene too, because it just goes to show you like, this guy is nice. It's Superman. He should be treating this kid with respect and integrity, even though the kid messed up and wasn't, you know, in the right state of mind. It's cool to see that. And it works really well. And I just really adored that scene. But we realize that maybe Bizarro does have something to do with the Chrissy and Allie storyline. So we might actually have to go over there and attack them. Which I got to say this again, it's impressive to me what the show could do with its budget because it's the same budget as the CW shows, but it just looks so good. It's so impressive the way that this fight scene worked out. Just like Tyler just looking at himself, just punching and not moving. And it's the perfect way to make Superman look at a fight. I think that was super impressive and just did so much for that character. I really adored it. It was just so fun. Such a good fight. It was cool. He, he knocks him out because he's the opposite. The great use of the fire and the heat breath and everything. And oh, it was so cool to see that. Knocks him out. Takes him to the fortress. We later learn that, yeah, Ali's controlling the Bizarro world. So maybe a Bizarro and Superman team up to free that. Tyler, our Superman, I should say, is going to Bizarro World. I know it. It has to be happening. Even just for a scene, we have to be going to Bizarro World at some point because we set it up now. Just put a different filter on the sets you got and everything could be the same. This Bizarro also talks normal where it's not like the, you know, like broken up pattern like me Bizarro, me and Bizarro. It's just like my world is doomed and I think I can stop both of it from happening. I need to kill Allie. Maybe he will. Maybe that's what's going to happen here. Who's to say? Who's really to say? It could be the case. That wasn't the end of the episode, though, because we had a quinceanera to get to and everyone's having a good time. There's kind of like a small plot where the Cushings are going to go back to their Cortez name. Cool. I think that's fun. The mayor's like, oh, that's very progressive. How good of you guys, you know, doing that thing for yourselves, but it's probably for others. Like, whatever. It's a cool thing. Worked really well. But we also get the scene I knew was coming, and I really hope, again, it's just like with John doing the drugs. I, I understand this is important, and it's part of, like, the tropes and the cliches of this stuff. I really, really, really wasn't hoping we would see Kyle interacting with this woman he had the affair with. So he went to the bar in the last episode. And we're led to believe he's going to have the affair. He came there to say, I'm having doubts with my marriage, but I'm not hooking up with you, Tanya, which is great. That's the stuff I love to see. But he had doubts before and they did have an affair. And Lana knew about it, which I was like, yeah, Lana is a capable woman. This family has been through enough tragedy. I'm going to have to imagine it's going to be around the time that Sarah had her first issues and then he needed this to cope. And Lana's like, fine, you do what you have to, but we're protecting our family. That's what I think is going to happen here. Wow, that was great. But Sarah finds out, and during the father-daughter dance, she has to run away in a panic attack in a great scene. It's powerful. Because you can't do these things with the Kents. There is just a little, just a little bit of just, like, purity around the Kent and Lane family where we can't really, like, have them get too dramatic. I've been saying since forever, like doing the Clark and Lana kind of like bringing up the romance thing should be explored more. But I understand why you wouldn't want Superman to be a guy who could have an affair. I get that completely. And I do think Kyle is one of my favorite characters. And the fact that he is so heartbroken by his own choices leads me to believe he's going to make the right one in the end. I don't think Kyle and Lana are going to get divorced just because we've kind of played with that idea before. 
I think we're going to grow past this. And I think something might happen to Kyle. Now, they've been also kind of teasing that, like, Clark might be seen by someone. I think he's going to be seen by Kyle. I think that's just going to bind them together in some way. Because I do have a nice moment here where it's just slightly he opens up to Clark. Just like, I made a mistake and my whole family's about to fall apart because of it. That was a nice moment. And I think it worked really well. But... There's so much more about the show that I'm just super ego to see what happens. I cannot wait to see what's coming in the next episode because as it stands, I liked a lot of what we saw in here. It was strong. It was entertaining. It was a great way to get back to basics with these characters. We're setting up Bizarro World in a big way. We're setting up the tension between Lana and Kyle in a big way. We didn't see John Henry or Natalie, which I get it. Why do we need them in here? We didn't really. But man... The show continues to impress me, and it's really cool that we're getting Superman on television, and it's working really well. That will never cease to amaze me just because that's the era we live in. Just cool Superman on television with his sons acting like kids. They don't look like they're 15. Sarah does not look like she's 15, but that's television. That's the CW, and that's the world we are living in. So that is going to do it for this review of Superman and Lois. Hopefully in the next week's episode, we'll actually have a proper setup where I can use my 4K camera and make this look nicer. But until then, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. I will catch you in the next one. Have fun. Stay safe. Good luck.